Mr. Derek Veenhoff. He's better known as Deke. Drinking liquor with DJ Deke, we out laughing. Yo, Deke. Welcome back, folks, to the Decast. I'm here with legendary Ed the Sock and Leanna K. Welcome to the show, guys. Yeah, hi. Thanks for letting us waste our time with you. Cool. Sounds good. Ed the Sock, you guys will remember as the Canadian icon from the 90s, hosted shows on much music, such as Fromage and uh, Ed. What is this 90s? What is this 90s? Yeah, I was on in the 90s. Fromage, we didn't take over Fromage till 99. Well, okay. 90, 98, and then we actually got to do what we well, wanted we in 99. Well, we took over in 99, yeah, yeah. and uh, uh, Fromage's the most popular years were in the, 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 the aughts, in the 2000s. Well, I stopped, to be honest, I stopped watching somewhere around then anyway, so I, I, I don't know. You stopped watching, what, after our first Fromage? Yeah, yeah somewhere around there. Ah, you moron, why you missed <laughs> some of the best stuff? Um, other shows uh, was uh, Ed Knight, Ed's Night Party, uh, Leanna was a co-host on that as well. And uh, Ed is making his rounds once again. He's on a comedy tour uh, called The War on Stupid. And tomorrow night he will be in Niagara Falls at... Um, we will Big... be in Niagara Falls. Willie John's Big Easy, Niagara Falls. Uh, yeah. Tickets are uh, going fast. You can uh, get them on edthesock.com. And they're seriously, they're almost sold out. So get your tickets right now. Um Leanna I is point also... out that uh, Leanna is all, like it's not me that's doing the tour. It's me and Leanna. Yeah, I started the tour on my own, but now it's uh, me and Leanna doing uh, the. It's our war on stupid, and we each face different kinds of stupid. Sorry, right. I interrupted what your your pre written intro. Go ahead. No, that's okay. And so the tour has stopped at many places in Ontario. Niagara Falls is I think, the second last stop, and then there's and then there's a finale. Well, there's no finale. It's, it's Come on. we're just. Those are just the announced dates. There's more yeah. coming. There's more Elastics. coming. Okay. Yeah, we need a so little bit of in- a break in between. We got other media to do. Leanna's got her videos to do, and I got some stuff to build. He's yeah, all yeah. He's also yeah. been working on the Fu Network, which is a new uh, conglomerate of sorts that is going to be an online media empire, basically. Uh, and the shows are wide ranging. Um, so K- Kickstarter was what helped you guys uh, start some of these shows, right? No. Crowd, crowdsourced? No. Well, I used Kickstarter for Lady Bits. You used Indiegogo. Yeah, Leanna oh, used Indiegogo. Kickstarter for her Lady Bits series, which is worth watching. If you're a gamer, especially watching, it's funny, it's informative. Um, and my uh, the Indiegogo for the FU Network had absolutely nothing to do with the tour. Uh, the uh, Indiegogo happened uh, last July, and uh, the tour came up sort of out of the blue um, sometime a couple of months later uh, in the fall. And uh, it sort of came together very quickly, um, but isn't really it had nothing to do with the Indiegogo. This is uh, funding itself as it goes. The Indiegogo money uh, has gone towards uh, building. Basically, we're the process of building a new studio to uh, to do programming and stuff out of. So, what is the stupid that you guys are attacking? Is this a specific kind of stupid, or is it general a general stupid? Kind of both, I guess. Like it's everyday, you know, encounters with stupidity mixed with politics, mixed with, you know, sort of general. Um, if you look anywhere, you can't e- even if you don't leave your house, the Internet allows the stupid to come to you nowadays. It's really hard to get away from it. So, you know, if you can't get mad, get funny. Yeah. That, right. Oh, we should put that on a shirt. Don't uh, get mad, get funny. Don't get mad, get funny. I like that. Uh, but the thing is, you can't be funny these days. Because there's always somebody getting offended at your joke. They pick the fly shit out of the salt, and they miss the point of the joke, and they find something that is like the most tangentially related thing to the joke, and they they get offended, but they don't get offended because they're offended. They get offended on the behalf of somebody else. Usually people who are offended online are offended on behalf of some other group or individual who never asked them to be offended for them in the first place. But uh, we talk about, like Leanna said, everyday stupid, but also political stupid, stuff in the media, cable news stupid, uh, culture war stupid, and right. all this stuff. There's, I mean, we're surrounded by it now and to the point where people can't even seem to distinguish anymore what's stupid and what's just the way things are. And when you say offended, some people think, oh, that's just left-leaning people that are highly offended these days. But isn't it, isn't it on all sides? 
Oh, oh yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. Oh, it's the extremes on both ends. No, no political ideology has the market cornered on stupid or taking offense at stuff that. No, the, the biggest snowflakes I've encountered the last little while have been on the right. People like Ezra Levant, who's like one of the leading voices of the, the right online. Um, right. He blocked me uh, because I managed, because he put up some tweet about the headline was about these, uh, of course, it was anti Muslim, Muslims involved in some crime. And you click on the link to the story, and it has nothing to do with Muslims. It's nothing to do with what he's saying. He just knows that most people won't click on the link. They'll just see the headline and assume yeah. it's a true news story. So when right. I called him out on it, he blocked me. And then I still hear from other, you know, oh, I don't want to, I'm not uh, going to follow you anymore, Ed, because you said something that was supportive of Trudeau. It's like the right wing are the most sensitive. Uh, of the snowflakes. The left-wingers, they're just loud morons. But the ones who really get triggered, man, so many on the right get triggered. The, the weird thing yeah. is the hypocrisy is like a mirror, right? The, yeah. the right-wingers are like, free speech, and I don't care about your feels, and they're the most easily triggered people on the internet, if you know what buttons to push. But then the left-wingers, they act all like sensitive and caring and, you know, offended on behalf of kind of thing. But then when they find, you know, the the right target, they're the biggest trolls out there. So, you know, both sides are really misrepresenting what they're about. Yeah, totally. I, you it's... know, yeah, like it's, uh, for example, uh, am I really supposed to believe that all of a sudden the conservatives who thought that uh, uh, Jody Wilson-Raybould was in the job only because she was indigenous and a woman and she wasn't qualified, now actually believe that she is the saint of integrity and competence in her job. Uh, I've never seen conservatives more interested or more concerned about the dignity of women, indigenous people, and indigenous women before. Like, give me a break. It's just political opportunism, but they expect us to forget that they were the people who didn't think she should even be there in the first place. Yeah. And now, because they can use it as a as a, yeah. a wedge against Trudeau, all of a sudden they think that she's you know that, that that she's the second coming of something. They're they're the party that blocked the missing and murdered Aboriginal women inquiry. Like they blocked it, and now they expect they expect us to believe they care about Indigenous women. What is the what is the conservative angle on blocking something like that? Is everything about fiscal? Is it to save money because it's an inquiry that would cost? Did they just in, in that in that particular instance the the party line was murder is murder. We shouldn't be like we Extra. treat every murder equally, right, so we right. don't need to delve into the you know societal you know the 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 socioeconomic reasons why. Um, women, indigenous women are much more likely, like significantly more likely than the general population to be a victim of violence. Like that is stuff that as far as I'm concerned, okay, it affects one group, but it affects a group where something is going on there and we need to figure out what it is. And right. there's nothing wrong with science, no matter what the science is applied toward. Like, you know, if there was a rash of murders in one neighborhood, they would say, you know, we should really look into this rash of murders oh, in no. one neighborhood. The, that was my but, old. That was my old neighborhood growing up. And no, they didn't care about okay, that. Okay, well, that's no. because that was uh, there was a lot of mostly <laughs> Afro-Caribbean people there. Yeah, um, yeah. The conservatives saying, didn't care about let's that. Let's say that there was a rash of murders in a white, nice white neighborhood. Yeah. Nobody would say, well, let's not look. No conservative would say, let's not look into it because murder is murder. Doesn't matter where it happens. They would look into it. The fact is that they don't really give a damn about indigenous people or people of any color or anybody who's not white. As far as they're concerned, they're just a bunch of whiners who should just be happy that they weren't all wiped out with smallpox or something. OK, but in fairness, most white liberals at the end of the day really don't care either. They pretend to care, but you put them in a room full of a lot of like black and brown people and they are terrified. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I, I know we're really we're, we're dunking on the right 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 now, but it is by no means exclusive to them. Oh no, the left's full of BS. Look at the left. They, they, the conservatives as a, a political party, they net, they always back each other up. They always back each other up. The liberals, they tear each other apart. Like I always say, conservatives right. circle their wagons and shoot outwards. Liberals circle their wagons and shoot inwards. You got liberals attacking liberals uh, instead of standing together when there's an election coming. It's just, it's moronic. There's a different brand of stupidity for the right and the left. But no side is more or less stupid than the other. Right. It's like the left eats their own, that phenomenon that we see. Um, so your views, Ed, have, have they shifted over the years? Um, 
you're described as a slightly left of center. Is that accurate, or or do you no, change on various issues? It's not like it's the, the truth is that politics has pulled everything so far yeah. to the right that if you're standing in the center, you're seen as left. I'm where I always was. Right. I've always been case by case, issue by issue. Basically, I'm more interested in what's pragmatic. What makes the most sense? Not what gives people feels, not what is more ideologically pure. What actually works for human beings? Because, you know, you look at political systems on paper and some of them look amazing and then you put them with human beings and discover, wait a minute, this doesn't work with human beings. So I don't give a damn about ideology. I care about what is actually going to do the most good. And uh, of course, I've got people on the left who say that I'm right wing, people on the right who say that I'm left wing, which as far as I'm concerned, that's like the, the third bed in uh, Goldilocks's bear house. It's the one that's just right. So the devil's advocate argument to that is, I guess, uh, every voter thinks that their party or, the, or what they're voting for makes sense, quote unquote. But is there some is there a problem with media literacy or um, seeing through the BS to, to get voters to maybe be more in touch with what they really feel makes sense rather than just listening to a politician or a friend that's telling them how to vote or something like that? I think those are kind of two separate questions, yeah. I mean, with the first one, I know a lot of people who hold their nose and vote. I know I do that a lot. I don't necessarily think that a party platform makes perfect sense. It's just less nonsensical than the alternatives. You know, you right. vote for the the best option, not the perfect option. But do we need more liter media literacy? Yeah, I mean, I try. The nice thing about the internet is that you can can read and view uh, things in their contextual entirety. You don't have to watch, say, you know, Jody Wilson-Raybould's prepared statements filtered through the media. You can go online and you you can read her statements or you can watch her statements in their entirety. You don't have to get an out of context soundbite. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people don't think they have the time to do that, right. but you know, I play video games and I have the news on. So I just wait for the news to start repeating the cycle. And you know, I switch between Canadian and American news, but I play that while I'm gaming. And, sure. and so, you know, I can stay informed and, and I feel like I have a, a decent grasp on stuff because I see the stuff where it's happening and how it's happening instead of just um, the media has spun this SNC Lavalin thing, I think, quite badly. So and what I, are so sorry to interrupt you, but what are some of the glaring things that people are getting wrong uh, about the SEC Lavalin case? You guys have been well, critical on Twitter and that about uh, some of the backlash. What getting, here's what they're getting wrong, that there was any crime committed. You know, the, even the woman who's complaining yeah. says there was no crime committed. And right. you know what? It comes down to, was there improper pressure or not? Well, yeah. you know what? That's extremely subjective. It's like whether somebody's attractive or not. It, you know, it's all subjective. It's all very, do you like Doctor Who or not like Doctor Who? Is Doctor Who good or is it crap? It's all subjective. Everything is opinion. And so in one case, she has one opinion. And uh, Gerald Butts had another opinion, and the Privy Council guy had a different opinion. It was like that thing on the internet with, do you hear Laurel or do you hear Yanni? Well, you legitimately heard either Laurel or Yanni. You weren't, li you weren't lying, uh, but everyone, they have a different opinion. And it's like Obi-Wan Kenobi said, much of, you know, much of life depends on your perspective. So it's, uh, there, there's no crime. There is no reason for the RCMP to investigate. There is no proof that she was demoted uh, because she wouldn't do what the prime minister wanted. Um, here's the thing. If the prime minister really wanted to uh, to get in the way and to have uh, the prosecution go a certain way, prime minister could do it. Let's face it. He didn't. And they, they say, well, she was demoted so that Trudeau could put into office somebody who would uh, take the route that he wanted. Well, the thing is that the new person hasn't changed the prosecution that Wilson Raybould put into place. So how did moving her change the game? It didn't at all. Well, I'm going to go deeper than that. I think the whole problem with the way this, this scandal has been presented is a very Americanized view of our politics. You know, what are people comparing it to? The Saturday Night Massacre, you know, Richard Nixon. And Nixon did what he did, firing Archibald Cox and, and you know, the chain of events that unfolded after that to cover up his own, you know, illegal, corrupt dealings. There's absolutely no indication. Political motivations are not the same as selfish motivations, and that would be the ethics breach. There has never been any indication that that happened. But also, 
the very interpretation of how these sort of the idea of separation of powers. We don't have that in the same way in this country. Like right. the fact that the attorney general and the justice minister are even the same job. Is, Other Commonwealth yeah. company cu countries have separated that position before now. I think that's a very fair debate that we should sure. be having instead of just pounding on Trudeau because it's fun to beat on Trudeau. Yeah. Like there's a lot of that going on. There's just this emotional thrust that it, the same thing happened with Obama during his first term. He promised so much. You know, he promised like the sun would rise again and sunny ways and everything yep. would be good again. Nobody can live up to that hype. And I think that this scandal has just been a way to sort of people to pour our Dis collective disappointment in Justin Trudeau that he's not the perfect dreamy boy band prime minister that a lot of people wanted him to be. And that's sure. just not fair. You know, like, yeah. the thing is that Andrew Scheer, let's face it, the 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 opposition, I don't think Andrew Scheer has has had his erection go down since this whole thing yeah. uh, started because yeah. he had he had no chance of being elected prime minister before this. Now he thinks maybe he's got a slim chance. Andrew Scheer <laughs> always has this smirk on his face like an eight-year-old kid who just farted in the elevator and is waiting for the first person to smell it. And, and Jagmeet Singh, a non-entity. He's like the NDP are at record lows. But a nice uh, guy, though. I'm sure he's a nice guy, but you know what? I don't give a crap if he's a nice guy. Is he going to be a good leader? And turns out he hasn't really inspired the troops. I've listened to what he, the things he said. I've read the things he said, and I've assessed and I've determined that the brightest thing about Jagmeet Singh is his turban. Though I will say, I think he's been better than Sheer on this SNC level and thing. Yeah, because he doesn't think that he has a chance of actually getting elected no, prime but, minister. Okay, that, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the reasons. I just think based on the facts, his prescription is actually like public inquiry. Fine. I mean, I think let the ethics office investigate. They've shown a good track record of, you know, being even and not being partisan. Just do that. I mean, um, but there's nothing wrong with a public inquiry that's not going into this territory that Cheer is wasting RCMP resources when only the alleged victim in this has said no crime's been committed. Like, I, I'm, I'm with jug meat here. It's uh, right. a public inquiry. OK, that's perhaps a sensationalized, perhaps, you know, kind of a dramatic demand, but at least it's within the realm of fair comment. Uh, a nonsense police investigation wasting the resources of the um, underpaid, overworked police force that is supposed to be keeping us safe from terrorists and um, among other things, very important jobs they have to do. That actually pisses me off. That's irresponsible. And let's step away from partisan part politics for a while and point out that if a, if a lefty was wasting police resources for partisan purposes, the conservatives would be all over them and rightly so. So I'm going to give Andrew Scheer the same treatment. Mm -hmm. And what about the, this overshadowing the actual crimes of or, or the bribery and all that that SNC Lavon has engaged in or the, you know, the dealings in Libya and all of that and the well, like. That's the, a tricky you know what thing, I mean? Right? Is the main story kind of being overshadowed by the... the well, what's, the, well, what's the story? No, hold on, hold on. He has a what? valid point here. Does he? He, he does have a valid point here. I should pay here. better attention. Yeah, Go yeah, ahead. Pay better attention. Um, bribery is, is bad, right? We can all sort of agree bribery is bad. But one of the, the pieces that has been reported, but it's been reported down here instead of way up here, that SNC-Lavalin's own like internal people realized maybe we shouldn't be paying for hookers and blow for some Saudi prince. And the minute they stopped doing it, the Saudis went with another con another contractor, another engineering firm that would pay for their hookers and blow. And now this that, in Libya happened as well, right? With Momar's son. Yeah, they did but that's this as what well. I'm talking about. Like this is a Libyan contract. These are not fraud crimes committed in Canada. These right. are fraud crimes committed in It's an in international Libya. company, yeah. Yeah, it's an international company. And the ugly truth, that you don't hear talked about that the CBC had one op-ed column with a, a journalist who'd actually been through Libya on, on assignment. And he talked about they had to bribe officials 
every step of the way. So it's kind of par for the course in, in those it, nations. Yeah. Russia, it's, it's Middle water. East. It's the cost of doing business. And so basically what the government is saying by making this illegal is that Canadian firms cannot do business in these Middle Eastern countries. Yep. That's a good I'm not point. sure if I necessarily have a problem with that, but let's be real. That's basically what we're saying. I do have a problem with it because you know what? That's the system that works all through the Middle East. Bribery, graft, and we call it bribery and graft. They call it Tuesday. Like yeah. that's just the way it they operates. actually have a term it for is, it, and yeah. I don't remember what it is. But there's actually like, uh, you know, like it's their roll up the rim to win. win. Right. It's a meaningless term outside of Canada, but we know what it means. Yeah. It's, yeah. Look, if you if you want to compete internationally, it's it's a world that doesn't operate according to the niceties of the that w we'd like to think exist here in North America. And yep. you know what? If they'd done this bribery here in in Canada or in the United States, I'd say you're absolutely right. Okay. But you know what? In order to even operate in these countries, you have to bribe people. And it's not like there's ever any governments there that do anti-corruption uh, things because they're all corrupt. And when they're all corrupt, they're not. None of them are corrupt. If you know what oh, I mean? Yeah. That, and talking about government in that, Libya, the government in Libya is I mean it's essentially barely a government. I mean, they the whole you know the whole infighting there is like. It was just a war-torn country. I mean, it's yeah, just let's, chaos. Let's face it. There's an element of hypocrisy in this whole thing, too, because this is going on while country, you know, major U.S. cities and a couple of Canadian ones, like Toronto was in the bid for the Amazon HQ2, right? Yeah, look at the bribery. All of that was bribery. Oh it was God. bribery through tax incentives. Why is that any... Di I'm actually kind of like, hookers and blow is more honest. Like, tax incentives. No, 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 no. It's state-sponsored bribery. Let's call it what it it's, is. It's state-sponsored bribery for corporate welfare. And that's to stop them from going overseas. Yeah, and you know what? I got no... I actually have no problem with giving tax breaks to keep corporations in cities that employ lots of people. I understand that's also the game. And they happen to bring to the, you know, to, to the neighborhood, they bring an awful lot of business and industry. I mean, look what's gonna happen in Oshawa when GM yeah. leaves. It's not just the GM workers that are gonna be down the tubes. It's gonna be all the parts suppliers and the couriers who brought the parts to and from the uh, parts suppliers to the to the manufacturer. There's a, an entire community that's gonna be devastated. And you see this all through history. There was company towns that just disappeared because the company disappeared. So do I have a problem with governments uh, bribing essentially offering incentives for companies to, to operate in their jurisdiction? No, because yeah. that's just the way the world works. Well, and these Pollyanna views of these people uh, who think that everything should be like a freaking TV show, and right. uh, after 48 minutes it all gets resolved with a nice answer. Uh, it's, yeah. it's bull, okay? Live in the real world. So what uh, we've determined is we're going to decriminalize uh, coke, hookers, and bribery. That's... See, I think we start with hookers, see how that goes. Right. And then we'll check in on the other two. Um, <laughs> so, I'm not talking about decriminalizing it here. I'm saying that if that's what happens in other countries, yeah. who are we to well, say this, how they should operate? This is the other crazy thing. Like we're in this sort of protectionist zone of like North America shouldn't be policing the world on the one hand. Like it's too expensive. We shouldn't have troops all over the place. But if we're not, you know, extending our values to the rest of the world, we have to accept the rest of the world on their own terms. We cannot have it both ways. That's yeah. a good point. Yeah, like you can't say we're going to withdraw from the world and then complain that the world by our standards is corrupt. Well, like, I think I think protectionism and that kind of um, nationalism is kind of going to be going by the wayside internationally in the future because globalism is just kind of a natural force, globalization rather, and, um, you know, like you said, we, we do want to extend our values because if we've seen benefit in our values in our society, of course we want to help other humans across the world and and, and exchange values as well and, and, and sort of have that marketplace of ideas and, and also economics uh, wise, you know, we don't want to we don't want to sanction off, uh, you know, different countries like what ha happens with North Korea, countries like this that, um, you know, by their own <laughs> accord or ours, they, they get excluded from all these, um, you know, the, the prosperity in that. Well, that's the thing, right? Like nowadays, and unless there's like across the board UN sanctions where all countries are on board, somebody like an SNC Lavalin pulls out of Libya, a Chinese company's going in, a Russian company's going sure. in. It's yep. almost like an economic cold war where there's all these, you know, proxy dealings. And if, you know, we're not, if we're making, that, that's why these, um, 
uh, you know, deferred prosecution agreements came in, that you find the crap out of them, put money into the uh, government coffers, um, you know, don't let people, workers who did nothing wrong, pay the price for their boss's corruption. And if SNC-Lavalin thinks that these fines in Canada are worth the cost of doing business in Libya, well, they can keep doing that and they can keep paying the yeah. fine. Because let's face it, these corporate fat cats, none of them are going to see a day in jail. The one guy that went to jail in, I think it was Sweden, is probably the only one who's yeah, ever going to see jail time. Have you seen time. Swedish jails? It's all like Ikea furniture, and it's all nice and clean. It's yeah. not like Oz in Swedish jails. I think they even give you your own Allen key. But listen, for all the people out there who are complaining, globalism, globalism, globalism. Listen, do you, do you want to go to war? Do you want to be like previous generations? you want to have a draft? you want to go to war? No? Then shut up. Because the only thing that has stopped us from having another world war is the fact that it's too costly because the global economy yeah. is too interdependent. We can't have wars between nations like you know World War II anymore. Can't even have things like the Korean War. We can't have that because the nations all rely on each other economically. So the greatest yeah. way to not have war for all the lefties who are anti-globalist um, is uh, to continue to have globalism. Right, glo anti-globalism is right wing now, Ed. Yeah, well, the, for the righties who think that globalism is taking away their jobs, you know what's taking away your jobs? Automation, okay? Not globalism, automation. Well, there it's is, Skynet, okay? There it's, is uh, also it, a, a world war going on right now on the internet. I mean, cyber warfare is alive and well. It's all, you know, nation state actors and contractors, and we've got serious issues with, wow, we let Huawei build our 5G technology, and right. we're worried about bribery in Libya. We should be worried about malware on our own 5G networks. That's a bigger issue right now. Yeah, sure. and also don't send your penis pictures to people because you never know where they'll get. You know, I like the way your mind works. I liked how you listen, went from Listen, you want like, to see my, how my mind works? Right, I've been very distracted by the fact that over the shoulder there, we've got... Uh, my, my Superman or no, my movie? No, no, no. On the, on the Derek side, you've got a Ninja Turtle who looks like he's about to become a flasher. No, no, like he's that, gonna that's pull their, open his dress that's thing their and costume show you his... so they don't know he's a turtle. Yeah, but yeah, okay. he had to go to the movies in that. So that yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it looks like he's going to a porn theater. Okay, and um, the the Bart Simpson, those eyes just look like boobs. They're just looking at me like a pair of mouth. Boobs. I don't even think he has a chin. Actually, he's just. It looks like he's got boobs and that nose is a penis. All, all so, I know, all I know, is that Bart shouldn't like go to a Seven Eleven in any southern neighborhood in the U.S. Not he wearing a hoodie. Not wearing a hoodie like that. Yeah, he's, he's a person of color. He's, he's yellow. Yeah, he's a little too dark. He'll get shot. Yeah. Shift. Okay. Shifting gears to the U.S. Speaking of that, uh, Leanna, you recently uh, had a small critique for uh, AOC on Twitter for her quote unquote uh, attack. On moderate views, oh, her she called moderate not knowing views. Knowing how American government works, yeah. She called moderate views meh or yeah, cynicism. embracing and, meh. Yeah, embracing. And, and your cynicism. your view was a little bit. Um, explain your view about the founding okay. fathers it's not, and. It's not my view. It's not my view. It's an understanding it's of how American the Amer system of American government is supposed to work. There's two fundamental levers of the structure of how government is supposed to work in the US, which is minority rights, meaning that it's not winner take all like it is up here where you know the liberals can block everything and push things through. And there have been benefits to that. I mean, that's why we got gay marriage so quickly, but that's not how the US system works. It's based on minority rights and it's based on compromise, meaning the only things that can really get passed under the US system of government is incremental moderate legislation. You cannot get things like the New Deal back in the day. That's a once in a generational thing. And the only reason they were able to do that is because there was bipartisan support because the depression was horrible. And that's the thing, this idea that the extremists somehow ran away with the store and got the New Deal through, that's not how it worked. Right. Things had to get so terrible that everybody went, oh, gee, you know, the moderates got on board. There, were enough, there was enough bipartisan support to pass the New Deal. And I know, I, I believe she knows this. Which is why I don't agree with, you know, her conservative critics who think she's just some dumb bunny who should shut up. The bartender, she's, they call her. Yeah, she's one of those people who knows that you can 
you can bypass people's reason with emotion with appeals to emotional rhetoric and that's yeah. the other thing that the founders of america built into the system to prevent happening the reason right. change is so slow under the u.s system is because the um the anti-federalists of which sam adams and uh, thomas jefferson and james madison were all members the people that wanted states rights and didn't think that the original wording of the constitution protected individual rights enough they saw this coming because they saw the appeals to emotion, they were. I just did a whole series on. They saw Trump coming. Well, they yeah, kind of. I just did a whole series People on the origin. Didn't see Trump coming. I'm trying to get a sentence out. Uh, this is very ironic. I just did a whole thing about the history of freedom of speech in the Western world, starting in ancient Athens and going up to the First Amendment. And I deal with this a lot. The fact that Athenian direct democracy, the founding fathers of America went appeals to emotion were too effective. Their mob rule. Um, Ran, ran away with things too often. That's why they wanted representative democracy and not direct democracy. And people like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Bernie Sanders and those ilk and the people on the right that, you know, the, the Tea Party and all that stuff, they are all looking to short circuit that with emotion. And unfortunately, right. the American public school system is so in the toilet that they aren't educated enough to go, wait a minute, this isn't how our system is supposed to work. The same way if they actually knew every country that has really embraced full-blown socialism and not a mixed economy like we have in Canada and, you know, in, in the, the Scandinavian countries that they all yeah. look up to, those are mixed economies. Those are not socialist economies. Exactly. China was a socialist economy and it opened up. It had to. The Soviet Union was a social economy, and when the Soviet Union fell, you know, in the in the early '90s, some farmers were still using tractors from the 1930s. Mm -hmm. That's what happens See, under socialism. Now they can sell those tractors on eBay and make a fortune to collectors. You sell them on American pickers. Yeah, you know. Yeah, uh, communist pickers. Uh, I would say this: that that but, on I mean, the right, on the right, and on the left, there's a lot of people trying to spread pixie dust of uh, purest, pure ideology. And uh, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. Uh, I can't. She is right now. Um, she, she's hot topic. Drunk with her own power. Okay, she's drunk with her own power. She's young. She's naive. Now, I, I, I can understand if she doesn't really understand how the American system is supposed to work. Neither does their president. But <laughs> she walks around right. talking with, but as if like you've been there for five minutes. Yeah. I understand that that you're getting a lot of attention because you've been there for five minutes and you're a loudmouth like Bernie Sanders and you're saying something that's drawing a lot of clicks and a lot of feels. But I don't. I think she ought to, as somebody who's brand new there. She ought to just sit back a little bit and learn rather than talking as if she knows everything when she doesn't because she's going to look like an ass. Well, well she's it, the boss, according to her. So, Well, the, the other thing is I, I sort of get why people like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez are popular. What I will give her, she worked. She worked for that seat. Good for her. She exploited an, uh, a lazy incumbent. Good for her. Right. But the problem is that people of her age and younger believe that capitalism doesn't work because it hasn't worked for them. The problem is the form of capitalism that they grew up under is not capitalism. It's neo mercantilism. And we need to start talking about that, that the form of capitalism that's been going on for the last 20 years is not capitalism at all. Capitalism works if it's allowed to work. We just haven't had it in a very long time. And right. just to sum up, um, all this stuff that we've been talking about, most of it is not what we'll be talking about at the show. Um, there's an awful lot of stuff that we'll touch on it, but uh, it's uh, a lot more comedy, a lot more videos, a lot more funny pictures and things like that. Um, showing some uh, excerpts of my tour uh, early on, which was kind of a disaster <laughs> as far as the places that I stayed, the hotels I was at, some of the, the skanky clubs. Um, so there's stuff like we've been talking about, but there's also stuff that's just irreverent and fun and does touch on current events, but also allows people to laugh because comedy, the best thing comedy can do is allow dialogues to happen that otherwise would be fights, but instead we laugh. See, that and, was very uh, capitalist. Shill those tickets. Oh yeah. yeah. So yeah, go get sure. your tickets. I don't know how many tickets are left, but here's the thing. Um, there, uh, our shows, people are standing because all the seats yeah. are sold. We get people standing, and our shows run 90 minutes to two hours, just us doing our stuff. And people stay all the way to the end, so they're not like they're getting bored, but they stand. If you don't want to be standing, and you want to have your ass in a seat, 
then make sure you get your tickets at EdTheSock.com. Okay? See, we're not, we're not going to give them the show material on a, like a, <laughs> a, a live stream or a podcast or anything like that. That's giving it away for free. You don't do that. Yeah, never give it away for free unless it's your first hit of crack. So in closing, could you, Ed, could you give us a little quick history lesson of of your opinion of why or why you left much and why why it failed and the the freedom and the interactivity and the spontaneity that you had there and how or or what are you doing with that concept and are you bringing that back through the FU network and and how is that going to work? Well, that's a laundry list of questions. Um, I left much music because management changed and they had lost the idea of what much music was all about instead of being original and authentic. There was somebody there who only wanted to copy MTV. She looked up at her TV and said, why can't we do that show? And it was because, well, we have like one one hundredth the budget and one one thousandth of the resources. Wow. Um, and so but it, it went from being a place that reveled in creative risk to just trying to be something that it wasn't trying to be somebody else. And uh, management was so awful. Like, can I swear on the show? Yep. Fuck okay. Yeah. Yeah, the woman said to me, our viewers are stupid and just want shit, so we're just going to give them shit. Yeah, and the stuff they were going to force us to do would not have worked. No, they yeah. wanted us to do fromage every month, as it, which we said, no, you can't do that. It's an annual show. You don't do the Academy Awards every month, for crying out loud. And so they came up with video on trial, which was ripped off from an idea that we had that they said no to, that they then stole. Mm. Um but it was just, they told us that the audience was stupid and that we couldn't reference anything that was older than three months, any news or anything older than three months because our audience was too stupid. And we said, we just did a uh, documentary called Smartass uh, about hip hop. And I went back like the 16th century and it had higher ratings than anything else on much music. And they just said, yeah, the audience isn't into that. So when you tell them that we're getting high ratings and they say the audience isn't into it, it's time to go, because there again is people following ideology instead of pragmatism. Mm -hmm. They were assholes, and we left, and I left, and George left, and Rick left, and uh, Bradford left, and Amanda left, every, Rachel, we all but, left. But then all that authenticity went on to the internet anyway. Well, much music was the internet before yeah. there was the internet, and if much music management had been smart, instead of being intimidated by the internet and saying, no one wants to watch music videos on TV anymore, they would have realized that the thing that much music offered was the authenticity, the in the moment, the contextualizing of music. They did and not pop want culture. to do context at all. So but, they, oh my God, they, yeah. much music could have owned the internet. Instead, they retreated yeah. and turned into nothing. They don't exist anymore. It's now called Much, and they run reruns of South Park and uh, The Simpsons. So they squandered it. They just squandered it. Uh, the we're going to bring it back with the FU network. Going to be uh, current affairs, politics, video games, entertainment, music, everything under the sun. But all of it with that originality, that snap, that crackle, that authenticity uh, that much music had. Um, and that down-to-earth quality that's very Canadian, very self-effacing. So people can find previews at FUNetwork.tv now. And soon there will be new shows, including some new Fromage shows. Right on. We want to thank you guys uh, for your time and for joining us on the podcast. Um, get your tickets, guys, at edthesock.com for tomorrow night's show. Um, where can everybody find you? Leanna K is your YouTube channel, Leanna? Yeah, uh, Leanna K on YouTube, Red Leanna K on Twitch and uh, Twitter. That's what I'm looking for, Twitter, right? Yeah, and uh, I'm at Ed the Sock on Twitter. On uh, Facebook, it's uh, Ed the Sock's FU Network. Instagram, Ed the Sock. Right on, guys. Thanks a lot. Have a good time at the show, and best of luck on the rest of the tour. All right. Thanks very much, and think about the disconcerting value of those those toys behind I you. I like it. Leave it exactly as it is. Though Change I do nothing. like Eclipso. Okay, see you later. Peace.